Welcome to our Sanskrit.com. This is lesson 29. In the previous lesson, lesson 28, we started looking at the perfect tense called lit by the Sanskrit grammarians. We said that there are three tenses to indicate past action, the imperfect, the aorist and the perfect. We also said that in classical Sanskrit, these three tenses are used interchangeably for any past action. In this lesson, lesson 29, we will look at some more conjugation paradigms of the perfect tense. Let us take the root ni, lead, as an example of a conjugation of a root ending in vowels of e or u type. The strong stem is ninai or ninai and the weak stem is nini. Let us take the very common root bhu, b. Only active forms are seen in practice. There is only one stem, babhu. Let us take the root da, give, as an example of a conjugation of a root ending in a. The stem forms are dada and dad. Note the ending au in the first and third person singular of the active. Let us take the root tan, stretch, as an example of a conjugation of a root with medial a. This shows the fusion of the root and the reduplication, resulting in a medial a in the weak forms. The strong stem is tatan or tatan and the weak stem is ten. Let us take the root vach speak as an example of a conjugation of a root that undergoes samprasaranam with the initial va contracted to u in the reduplication. In the strong forms, only the reduplicated syllable is contracted, while in the weak forms, the radical va is also contracted to u, giving u. The strong stem is thus uvach or uvach, and the weak stem is uch. Four roots ending in r do not take the union vowel e in the first person's dual and plural. This is the end of lesson 29. In this lesson, we looked at some paradigms of the perfect tense. We will continue with the perfect tense in the next lesson also.